Hello everyone. Thanks again for visiting us today here at Philo Notes. And welcome to another edition of our daily whiteboard. Today I will talk about exclusive disjunction in symbolic logic. But before I start discussing this topic for today, let me do a quick recap of the previous discussion. So, I have mentioned that there are two types of disjunction or disjunctive statements, namely inclusive and exclusive disjunction. And in the previous edition, I discussed the nature and characteristics of an inclusive disjunction, including its rules and how to determine its truth value. Now, in today's edition, I will focus on exclusive disjunction. Please note that it is necessary for me to make reference to our previous edition for us to distinguish an exclusive disjunction from inclusive disjunction. And so, for you to understand it better, it is important that you check out our previous edition that is titled Inclusive Disjunction in Symbolic Logic, Philo Notes Daily Whiteboard. Or simply subscribe to Philo Notes for more discussions in symbolic logic. All right, I believe that that expectation is clear enough. Now, let's proceed. So, an exclusive disjunction is a type of disjunction that is connected by the words either or but not both. As we already know, the symbol for the connective of a disjunctive statement is wedge. However, an exclusive disjunction is symbolized differently from an inclusive disjunction. Consider this example. Either John is singing or he is dancing, but not both. This example is clearly an exclusive disjunction because of the words but not both. Please note that it is possible for John to be singing and dancing at the same time, hence perhaps both, or inclusive. But because of the qualifier but not both, which clearly emphasize the point that John is not singing and dancing at the same time, then the statement is clearly an exclusive one. Now, if we let P stand for John is singing and Q for he is dancing, then the statement either John is singing or he is dancing but not both may be symbolized as either P or Q. However, this is faulty because it does not clearly specify what the statement either John is singing or he is dancing but not both states. So, how do we symbolize this statement then? As I already mentioned, if we let P stand for John is singing and Q for he is dancing, then we can come up with either P or Q. But it's not yet complete. We need to take into consideration the phrase but not both. And if we recall the discussion on conjunctive statements, we know that the symbol for but is dot. And in the discussion on negative statements, we learn that the symbol for a negation or the word not is tilde. Now, the word both in the statement refers to John is singing, P, and he is dancing, Q. Thus, the phrase, but not both, is symbolized as follows. But not P and Q. Now, if we add this symbol to the previous statement, either P or Q, then we arrived at either P or Q, but not both P and Q. 
Thus, the symbol for the exclusive disjunction, either John is singing or he is dancing, but not both, is either P or Q, but not both P and Q. However, logicians used a more simplified symbol for the phrase, but not both. They used the underlined wedge to symbolize, but not both. Thus, the exclusive disjunction, either John is singing or he is dancing, but not both, is symbolized as follows. And this symbol is read as P or Q but not P and Q, or either P or Q, but not both P and Q. In some cases, the exclusive disjunction does not contain the phrase, but not both. But if we analyze a statement, it denotes exclusivity. Let us consider this example. Either John is sleeping or he is studying. Although this statement does not contain the phrase but not both, it is pretty obvious that it is not possible for John to be sleeping and studying at the same time. Hence, this is an exclusive disjunction. Now, if we let P stand for John is sleeping, and Q for he is studying, then the statement either John is sleeping or he is studying is symbolized as follows. P or Q, but not P and Q. Or simply, now, here are the rules in exclusive disjunction. An exclusive disjunction is false if both disjuncts have the same truth value. Thus, for an exclusive disjunction to be true, one disjunct must be true and the other false, and vice versa. To illustrate that in a truth table, we say, if P is true and Q is true, then P or Q but not P and Q is false. If P is true and Q is false, then P or Q but not P and Q is true. And if P is false and Q is true, then P or Q, but not P and Q, is true. And if P is false and Q is false, then P or Q, but not P and Q, is also false. Now, given the rule in exclusive disjunction, how do we, for example, determine the truth value of the exclusive disjunction, not P or Q, but not not P and Q? Let us suppose that the truth value of P is true and Q is true. And so, if P is true and Q is true, then the statement, not P or Q, but not not P and Q, is true. And to illustrate that, we say, suppose P is true and Q is true. Now, before we apply the rule in exclusive disjunction in the statement, not P or Q, but not not P and Q, 
we need to simplify not P first because the truth value true is assigned to P and not to not P. And so if we recall our discussion on the rule in negation, we learned that the negation of true is false. So if P is true, then not P is false. Thus, at the end of it all, not P or Q, but not not P and Q is true. If P is true and Q is true. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me today in this edition of our daily whiteboard here at Philo Notes as we try to make the understanding of philosophy incredibly easy. Keep looking forward to our series of editions on the topic symbolic logic. And I hope you find this material helpful. And if you do, feel free to subscribe. Thanks. Take care.